Hi, I'm Ren Henry. I want to talk about my project I did on improving physics informed neural network gradient calculation on incompressible fluid cylinder wake. So the first thing we need to go over is what a physics informed neural network is. It's also known as a pin. So pins are special forms of neural networks that use physical laws to incorporate their learning mechanism. Uh, the advantage of doing this is that it gives them uh, more direct paths towards convergence. So usually they're able to converge faster. And by ensuring that those physical laws or rules are in their learning mechanism, uh, they make sure that they adhere to it and don't generate uh, impossible data by the time they're fully trained. The physics equations that we're going to be using are the Navier-Stokes equations. They're used to describe the flow of fluids, and they aren't just these ones, this particular form of them. Um, they apply to compressible and incompressible fluids, depending on the form that you take. Um, so we're looking at a simplification based off the assumption that the fluid we're doing is incompressible. So the top equation there shows us that the divergent of the flow velocity vector is equal to zero. And the second pair of equations is the conservation of momentum equations. So in these, the U term represents velocity in the X direction, V velocity in the Y direction, P is pressure, and while it looks like a V, there's also a nu there as well, which stands for the kinematic viscosity. The problem that we're going to be going over is the cylinder wake problem. So I have an image up right now that shows what it is. So we have a cylinder in the middle of a fluid flow, and the red color represents a high pressure, and a blue color represents a low pressure. And we can see from the uh, path to the right of it that it kind of flip-flops back and forth between them like a turbulent uh, flow as the wake goes past it. So our job is going to be trying to generate a uh, pin that can create these pressure values correctly. I should say the pressure gradient. The absolute pressure value doesn't have to necessarily be correct. Before we get too much further into the project that I did, I want to go over a literature review so that you have some examples of what physics and formal networks can do with Navier-Stokes uh, equations specifically. So this first paper um, by uh, Rassi is actually the paper that introduced physics to neural networks um, as a concept. And it went over the same problem that we're going over, where it used a pin to solve the cylinder wake problem. Uh, they do a little more advanced version of what we're going to be going over here. Uh, they also show that um, with a, oh, let's say a pin it can be a forward or inverse problem solution. By that, it means that if you give the pin a set of um, initialized values, it can be used to compute um, uh, states later on. And if you inversely give it states later on, you can use it to compute the initialized values that were allowed that to happen. Um, then the image we have here shows um, a diagram of the training data that was used. And so we have the X, Y, and T parameters. So they format it three-dimensionally. And all the blue dots in there represent training points that were used for the training of the pin, which was actually only 1% of the available data. And they generate the full 100% in the evaluation later on. And we're going to be doing that too. Next up, we have uh, Jin's work to create Navier-Stokes flow nets. Uh, these are a more advanced version of what was introduced in the last one. So they uh, only need initial and boundary conditions, and then they're able to solve for everything off, off of that. Um, there are two modes for them, either a velocity pressure or vortice velocity uh, outputs. So for the former, it outputs velocity and pressure values, and the second one it outputs vortice and velocity. Um, you would use the vortice and velocity when you're expecting a lot more rotational flow, and then it's better adapted to produce that. Um, it's able to do all this through unsupervised learning, 
And the image here we have pulled from the paper shows the black dots are the initial positions and the green dots are the added boundary conditions that were all that was needed to generate uh, those flow lines that you see there and then flow lines at subsequent time intervals. And the last paper I want to go over was uh, Ivazi's Physics Informed Neural Networks for Solving Reynolds Average Navier Stokes Equations. Uh, so this is a very specialized uh, pin in order to deal with uh, turbulence. So the previous models that I discussed, well, they can be used model turbulence. Uh, they're not optimized for it, whereas these are. Um, so they they do it by averaging the fluid properties over time rather than instantaneous values, which the previous models focus on. And so they're able to focus on the mean flow in order to generate uh, more accurate uh, results overall. So the first image we have in the bottom shows the prediction that they created and then the image next to it is the truth value and the one after that is the difference between the two and you see for how chaotic of a uh, image that they're generating it did a remarkable job um, at creating almost the exact output it was trying to create. All right so now I want to go over the methods for how I actually implemented uh, the pin that I created. So first thing I did was I found someone else's implementation. Uh, so um, the reference there, I found someone's implementation of it in PyTorch. Um, so I used that as inspiration to create my own in PyTorch Lightning using their initial architecture as a starting off point. Um, so their architecture had three inputs, X, Y, and T, as described in the first paper and literature review. Um, then they had nine hidden layers uh, each with 20 nodes in it, and then two outputs. Uh, those were psi and pressure. And psi is a stream function. It does, the architecture does not directly output U and V. So if we look over at this uh, derivation on the right, we show that we get U and V from psi, where U, the velocity in the X direction, is the partial derivative of psi with respect to y and v the velocity in the y direction is the negative partial derivative of psi with respect to x the reason we do that is because it actually enables us to have one of the criteria for our physics and formal network um, set by doing that so we see the divergence of v is supposed to equal to zero well when you take the divergence of v it's equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x plus partial derivative of v with respect to y. So if we substitute in um, the equations from the top into there, we see that we have the partial derivative of psi with respect to x and y minus partial derivative of psi with respect to x and y. So the order you do it doesn't matter, so it becomes zero. So by defining u and v that way from psi, we make the fluid incompressible by default. And continue on with the uh, initial implementation of what we constructed. Um, for an optimization function, we use the limited memory Broyden Fletcher Goldfarb Shano or LBFGS optimization function. Uh, I typically use Atom, and this is my first time hearing about it. Um, doing some research into it, I mostly found people saying it was too complicated to go into, so I did not delve too deeply into it. I just used the PyTorch function that already existed. And um, the other part that we have to go over is the physics loss that was calculated. Um, so we took those equations from before, and we moved the terms on the right side to the left side and now they should equal zero. So if we set over that result is equal to F, that gives us a loss value. And then the same thing for the Y component, we set equal to G. And so then we add those two together and then add it to the traditional loss, which is found by finding the mean squared error with respect to U and V for what they produce versus what they were supposed to. All right, moving on to the fun part, the actual implementation experimentation where I got to play with all the different features in it and see how everything interacted when I changed things around. So the first thing is that the, pay, the implementation I based mine off of uh, trained theirs for 500,000 epochs. 
and that took several hours to do on my computer and looking over the loss function over time I saw that it like basically um, peaked at well not peaked but um, didn't get much better severely diminishing returns after about 8,000 epochs so to be safe uh, I set mine to 10,000 um, so that takes you know about 20 to 30 minutes uh, much faster than hours took for each iteration before and then I started experimenting with the architecture to see what I could change so I uh, added two hidden layers of 20 nodes to it to see what that would do I compressed it so that it was five hidden layers of 40 nodes I added 10 nodes to each layer uh, I switched out the hyperbolic tangent activation function for different ones like relu leaky relu soft sign and several others uh, I switched out that new optimization function with the atom that I was more used to um, I tried directly outputting u and v instead of psi um, I removed f and g as loss terms and the loss function and then I added pressure um, for regular loss because at the initial implementation it was just u and v that are being used to calculate the traditional loss and so I added a pressure term to see um, how performance would change if I did that and then finally I did atom optimization let that run until it couldn't get much better and then uh, loaded that back up and used the LBFGS optimization on that so almost all of those fail to make any kind of improvement. They usually make things much worse. So the only ones that work are the ones that I have bolded there. So adding the 10 nodes per layer and then doing atom optimization and then um, the LB FGS both improve performance. So that was a very interesting lesson to learn. So here we have some results. So to generate these, I calculated the pressure gradient and velocity gradient errors for all the outputs um, for all x, y, t positions together um, during the evaluation period. And then I sum the mean squared error across all t's. So uh, we, what we saw was that the two I described previous to you um, benefited over the original one. And then I combined them and implement them both and that gave the best performance by far of any of the modifications that I did um, just to go over quickly some of the other ones um, so the no physics loss value as expected it's not really a PINN anymore or at least um, it's missing a huge part of it if we take that out so the forms degraded um, same thing when we outputted uh, the velocities directly because then it got rid of the compressibility property and now I want to show you some images. So here we have the output from the original architecture. Um, you can see that it stays pretty close to it, but it's not exactly perfect. Um, it seems to lag behind the other one does a little bit. Then here we have the best architecture output that was generated by having the 10 nodes added to it, plus the atom and then LBGFS optimization and that is by far the best result that we've had and it looks significantly better than the one um, it might not be obvious right here we did it side by side you can tell and just to show you what it looks like when one of them fails this is what happens when i remove the physics loss functions from the loss value and uh as you can tell that looks nothing alike and it did not do a very good job so overall i learned a lot from this project i learned how to implement pins uh, I learned how sensitive they can be. I did not think that changing the activation functions uh, would have such drastic consequences. Um, the only one that worked well was the hyperbolic tangent that we started with. Um, I was happy that I found two ways to improve performance and even more so that combining them made um, better than some of their parts. Um, adding the pressure term uh, increased the pressure accuracy. So it the absolute value was better, but the gradients for everything else um, got worse. So I, I learned that you have to kind of balance um, what you're looking for out of it. And I look forward to applying what I learned on my internship next summer. Here are my references. Uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation and have a great day.